We already talked about the classical statistics. An example is Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. And the classical statistics is actually used for studying the systems that obey classical laws. And if we have a system of huge number of particles that obey quantum laws, means the observable values are discrete, not continuous like in classical mechanics. Then we need quantum statistics to study such type of systems. I already know that you know the basis of quantum mechanics. But if you not, let me give you a small idea about the quantum mechanics. The central idea of quantum mechanics is everything in this universe, you, me and this everything, everything in the surroundings are all waves if they are isolated from the surroundings. Means they are not interrupted by photons or something. Then in that condition that thing is wave. But if, but uh, at this present condition, everything in our uh, surroundings, you, me, and we are all interrupted with the photons and we are all sharing the information with the surroundings. So we are not uh, wave at all. We are all in particle nature. But if we are all isolated, then we are waves. That's the central idea of quantum mechanics. Uh, you may know about the Schrodinger cat. The central idea of Schrodinger cat experiment is that box uh, we used to trap the cat is isolated from the surroundings means that box is not interrupted and the cat inside that box is dead and alive simultaneously so you may wonder but it's the reality it's the reality of the universe and you may worry what is the uh, i already talked about the wave nature so you may worry what is that wave nature the wave like thing associated with every particle is called uh, the wave function and the amplitude of that wave function is psi of x and this is a one dimensional case and uh, note that this oscillating quantity psi of x is not a physical reality or physical thing uh, it is actually a complicated complex thing uh, and that thing is oscillator but if we, if we come to the case of light waves the thing oscillated for that waves is actually the uh, electro electric field and magnetic field if we come if we plot a light waves the thing oscillated is electric field and also magnetic field perpendicularly but uh, that is a real case but it is a actually a complicated thing is oscillator and uh, and that complicated thing is psi of x it does not have any physical significance but if we take the square of the arm of square of the magnitude of this psi of x then if uh, that, that is psi star x psi of x psi star means uh, it may be uh, this psi of x may be complex sometimes that is it uh, it uh, can choose com complex domain that is i uh, you may you already know about the complex numbers so if we take the uh, square of the magnitude of psi of x at every point that may give the probability of seeing the particle at a particular point and it is called Copenhagen interpretation you already know about the standing waves if I trap a standing wave inside a boundary of length L uh, you uh, we can only get some discrete wavelengths like the standing wave I am talking about the strings not the particles or wave functions I am talking about the strings. You can uh, see this type of thing in guitar or violin etc. Uh, that, uh, that string can only, if we try to oscillate it, that string can only choose some discrete wavelengths. Uh, if you are a guitarist or violinist, you may already know about it. Discrete wavelengths means the discrete frequency. The first wavelength you can choose is L by 2. Second wavelength is the integral multiples of this L by 2 that is L that is 2 L by 2 that is L and the third wavelength it can choose is 3 L by 2 I already talked to you that the particle itself is a wave if we are not interrupt with the particle or the particle is isolated from the surrounding universe so imagine a particle is trapped in a one dimensional box if a particle is trapped in a one dimensional box then if we are not interrupted with it then the wave function of that particle is uh, that particle is a wave so uh, a wave like this so that wave can only 
choose that's the central idea that's the central idea that we can only choose some discrete wavelengths like l by 2 now i am talking about the case i am transferring our old strings to our wave functions that is that particles wave function can only choose the wavelengths lambda by 2 sorry l by 2 l and 3 l by 2 that's a central idea so uh, we see that the wave function if we have some boundary conditions or uh, we have some potentials this is actually potential uh, a one dimensional potential that is here the potential is infinity that is particle is not allowed to uh, go outside this uh, potential means if this wall is also a potential for me because i'm not able to enter to the another room because due to this high potential for maybe this potential is something nearly infinity for me because I am pushing it, I am not in the two other room. We already know from de Broglie's hypothesis that lambda is equal to h by mv. That is, we can replace it with the momentum of the particle. So, from this relation, you can write p is equal to h by lambda. So, you can see that this the wavelength, this lambda is actually the wavelength of the wave function, this wave function. So, you can see that if this lambda is discrete, this p is also discrete. That means, that's a central idea, that's a connection. So, this uh, lambda is discrete, this p is also discrete. So, p can choose only some discrete values. There is a p value for this lambda by 2, uh, that is p1. This, there is a momentum value for this discrete wavelength L that is maybe some P2 and this uh, maybe some P3. And also if uh, you know that the kinetic energy of a particle is P square by 2. So if this P is discrete the, that implies what the energy of the particle or the kinetic energy uh, simply the particle only have the kinetic energy inside the inside this potential because we have only potential uh, at these two points. So the total energy is actually the kinetic energy. So, the total energy is discrete. Why? Because the momentum is discrete. And uh, why the momentum is discrete? Because the wavelength is discrete. So, we can have some discrete en energy values E1, E2 for this momentum and E3 for this momentum. And this is the central idea of quantum mechanics. And now we are coming to the, uh, coming to study huge number of uh, particles that are isolated from the universe means we are not interrupted with that particles and we need to study the behavior of that huge number of particles this is the case of one particle now we have very huge number of particles and, uh, and you see that every single particle obey the quantum laws means every single particle have only the discrete energies e1 e2 e3 etc so we need we need a special tool uh, for studying that and that is called Bose-Einstein statistics and it is used to study huge number of particles that obey quantum laws and the, there's a specific there's a special condition for that particles that particles are bosons not fermions that means uh, for an energy level uh, let me I have an energy level E1 if they are fermions then uh, the maximum number of particles that you can choose uh, that you can come to this energy level is only two that is one particle house spin up and the other particle uh, house spin down but in the case of fermions if we are trying to fill the whole system with only spin up fermions then only one particle can come to this energy level even but if, if this happens in the case of bosons there are infinite number of particles can come to this single energy level E1 that is one boson, two boson, three boson can come, another boson can come that is the difference between bosons and fermions. For fermions we have another type of statistics called Fermi Dirac statistics and we will talk about it later. Our first attempt is to uh, uh, derive a distribution law for this type of bosons like we derived in the case of Maxwell Boltzmann statistics we derived the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution law. So, we are trying to derive a distribution law for this type of particles. Suppose I have some energy levels that is E1, E2, E3, etc. And suppose N1 
particles in this E1 state, N2 particles in this E2 state and N3 particles in this E3 state. Imagine that G1 states have this energy agent value E1. That is this agent value E1 is G1 fold degenerate. You may already seen the degeneracy in the, the you may already studied about it in your quantum mechanics classes. Uh, if not, uh, the degeneracy is simply how many how many states or simply how many independent wave functions have the have a same particular energy agent value E1. Here G1 independent wave functions have this energy agent value E1. So we say that this uh, state is G1 folded degenerate. So in fact, uh, imagine we need to and I, uh, let me ask you a question that in how many ways I can put this N1 particles into this energy level E1. For that I also need this uh, take into this degeneracy into account. That is imagine this G1 is 2 that is this is two fold degenerate that is uh, two states th this is the two states. These two states have the energy agent value E1. So uh, and also imagine this N1 is equal to 3. So I need to put three particles into these two states. In how many ways I can put these three particles into these two states? That is actually, this is the one way I can put first two particles here, one particle here and this is the other way I can put two particles here, one particle here and three particles here, zero particles here and three particles here, zero particles here. So total number of arrangement is four. And you can see that this is actually uh, the total number of arrangement is actually the permutation of this thing that is this uh, three particle and this th partition. So in fact total number of arrangement is uh, something uh, we can derive from it. So the total number of partition for this state is actually G1 minus 1. So G1 is what? G1 is 2 and 2 minus 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1. So there is a 1 partition here. So uh, the total number of arrangement is I can write 3 plus 1 factorial. So that is the total number of arrangements that can be made uh, with made, made uh, using this partition and these 3 particles divided by there is a repetition uh, between this particles that is 3 factorial and also uh, here only one partition but in general case can be more partition so one factorial. So you can see that that is also 4 because 3 plus 1 is 4 factorial divided by 3 factorial into 1 factorial and this 4 factorial is actually 3 factorial into 4 divided by 3 factorial into 1 factorial this 3 factorial 3 factorial cancel that is 4 divided by 1 factorial 1 factorial is 1 so that is actually 4. So you can see that this 2 4 we already get it to uh, the mathematical trick. So you can uh, this is actually the partition there is a one partition here. So uh, one partition for two states. So uh, how many partition for three states? Uh, let I have three state I divide it into three uh, for the, the, let this E2 state is divided it into three. So there are three states and two partitions. So partition is always one number less than the uh, degeneracy or uh, states that is I can put here as this one as two minus one. So I can write this equation in general case as look at here. 3 is the particle so n i and that 1 is 2 minus 1 that is degeneracy minus 1 plus g i is the degeneracy minus 1 factorial symbol divided by repeat rep rep uh, repetition of this n i particles so that is n i factorial times g i factorial because uh, these two uh, partition can be themselves 
interchange. This thing gives in how many ways I can arrange ni number of particles in this gi number of states. Now we have the number of ways in which ni number of particles can be distributed into gi number of states is given by this equation. Remember that this gi, this gi is actually the degeneracy of the state with some energy e i, e sub i. Uh, that means gi number of states have the same energy. Or from the quantum mechanics we can say that that state e sub i is gi fold degenerate. Similarly, you can find the same type of expression for all this this type of expression for all other energy levels like like you can find the same type of expression for e1 for this e1 this e2 this e3 this e4 and the ei so uh, imagine that this e1 is g1 fold degenerate and this e2 is g2 fold degenerate and this e3 is g3 fold degenerate and this e i is g i fold degenerate we actually find the expression for this e sub i e sub i so uh, we already have the expression for this e sub i which have n i number of particles this state have n i number of particles and that e i state is g i fold degenerate so we can find same type of expression for all these energy levels. So we can write. So we can write the number of ways in which n1 number of particles can be arranged in g1 states as this, and n2 number of particles can be arranged into g2 states as this, and n9 number of particles can be arranged into gi states as this and this uh, this corresponds to e1 energy level this corresponds to e2 energy level and this corresponds to ea energy level so from the probability theory the product of this all number of ways is actually the number of ways in which n number of particles can be distributed into this all this all energy levels that is we have n number of particles and we 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 need to uh, distribute uh, or we need to find the number of ways in which this n number of particles can be distributed into these all energy levels e1 e2 e3 e4 ea is actually the product of the number of ways in which n1 number of particles distributed into e1 state a n2 number of particles can be distributed into e2 states and uh, in fact actually this n number of particles the number of ways in which this n number of particles can be distributed into this all energy levels is called the micro state omega the micro state omega we already talked about this uh, the the micro state and you can write this expression as using the symbol uh, using the product symbol pi sub i that is this pi sub i implies this uh, this this thing the, like you know that the summation symbol is sigma sub i if we have the pluses in between these all things plus plus then you can use this sigma sub i but here you have the multiplication in between these all number of ways so you should use this pi i symbol for that from this expression you can see that if this ni and gi are very large you can simply avoid this one or you can neglect this one from the numerator and denominator because the contribution of that one is very very small so you can write this expression by avoiding that one as uh, pi the product symbol pi times 
Ni plus Gi factorial over Ni factorial times Gi factorial and you have a summation symbol I here as a next step let me take the logarithm on both sides of this expression you may ask why I take the logarithm on both sides of this expression and you already know that uh, kb times log omega is actually the entropy of the system and this log has the been uh, this logarithm is the natural logarithm uh, means it have the base e and you know that this base e uh, e, this means e is approximately equal to 2.71 so this logarithm is a base e, is a, e, this logarithm have the base 2.71 and uh, you know that what this expression means means is and if the system have large number of microstates large number of microstates omega then its entropy is also large so in, in fact the entropy yes is actually the measure of the uh, actually the measure of the number of microstates the system have if the number of microstates or the number of arrangements the system have is very large means its entropy is also very large and also in fact every system in the universe naturally it have the tendency to maximize its uh, number of arrangements the it have taking logarithm on both sides of this equation is very simple uh, you already know the logarithm result like log a over b c how can we expand this you already know that log a or b c is log a minus log b c and uh, because log a by b is log a minus log b and log b c is actually what log a minus log b c is log b a bracket is here log b plus log c so log b plus log c and this uh, minus comes inside the bracket gives uh, this expression log a or uh, a or b c as log a minus log b minus log c so if we apply that here we get log ni we get log ni plus gi factorial minus log ni factorial minus log gi factorial you can see that so for evaluating this expression you need to you need to know the you know what is uh, log ni plus gi factorial and log ni factorial log gi factorial etc so we we use the Stirling formula here. You may know the Stirling formula, and the Stirling formula is log n i factorial is equal to n i log n i minus n i. So simply, it is true for any any number. So that is, if we have log a, we need to expand log a factorial and log a factorial. And that is actually equal to a log a minus a. And the condition that this a should be very large. If this a is very large, we can use this approximation. This is actually an approximation only for true for very large a's for very very large a's. That is a is very very larger than zero. So uh, we already know that the Ni, the number of particles that distributed in each energy levels are very large, very large than zero. So we can simply use the Stirling formula to approximate these factorials here. In fact, you can use the calculator to verify this Stirling formula. That is, you may uh, give some 10 or 50 factorial and uh, you need to find log 50 factorial and you can simply see that it is actually approximately equal to 50 log 50 minus 50 you can simply see that you can see using your calculators 
we actually done that fact in our first class uh, i think we done it in the first or second class in our classroom already we done it so using sterling formula we get this expression uh, log omega is equal to summation over i ni plus di log ni plus di minus ni log ni minus di log gi as i already said the thermodynamic system itself has the tendency to maximize its entropy maximize its entropy so we already know that entropy is kb log omega so we need to maximize this function and i think you already know that uh, for a function from your plus two classes suppose we have a function suppose we have some function and here it is f of x and here it is x so uh, from this graph you see you can see that the, the maximum of this function is at 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 this point this point has the maximum value of the function so uh, in this point you can simply see that uh, for this value of x0 x maximum you get the value f of x maximum x sub so you can simply see that there is no there is no variation for this uh, f of x at this point no variation so you can simply write simply write d f of x over d x is equal to zero and because no variation d f of x is zero for the variation of this much x for this much change in the x d f of x is zero that's the idea so you can all simply write simply you can write change a change in this f of x is equal to zero just the change delta f of x change in this f of x is zero and that condition gives the maximum of the f of x so uh, i can maximize this entropy uh, thermodynamic system itself its entropy is maximum so i can write the delta s change in this s as change in this kb log omega which is equal to zero and this kb this kb actually cancels with this zero so you can simply say that uh, delta change in this log omega is equal to zero now i am going to connect this equation one with this equation so i need to take the differential on both sides of this equation one so differential of log omega is equal to differential of this rhs right hand side so let me take the differential so so i can write differential of summation over i n i plus g i log n i plus g i minus n i log n i minus g i log g i so in fact you can interchange this differential and this summation because uh, from your plus 2 classes you already know d by dx of f of x plus g of x is equal to d by dx of f of x plus d by dx of g of x it is also true for differential that is differential 
differentiation means we don't have uh, uh, the derivative with respect to something we just take the change directly so differentiation means the change change in this f of x plus d of x is change in this delta change in this f of x plus delta change in this g of x so you can this uh, this is actually the summation so you can take this delta uh, inside this summation like this you can take the delta inside this summation so uh, these two operations are actually commutative so so let me first evaluate this delta of n i plus g i let me put a big bracket here log n i plus g i so you can imagine this as this whole thing as a and this whole thing as b so you know that delta of a b is de a delta b plus b delta a you can apply the result here so you get ni plus gi delta of log ni plus gi plus log ni plus gi times delta of ni plus gi and in fact uh, if you look here you can see that this delta of ni plus gi is delta of ni plus gi is equal to delta ni why because this gi is a constant it does not have change with the spatial coordinates or time because it is actually the degeneracy and the degeneracy of the states is fixed and this degeneracy only change if you uh, if you apply some type of perturbation so you don't have uh, uh, don't have that perturbation in your syllabus so this gi is a constant in our case but this ni ni can change why because ni is the number of particles in a state so if this is the e1 state this is e2 state this is e3 state and initially let two particles in this e3 state and one particle is considered let imagine one particle in this e2 state and three particles in this e1 state it is possible for one particle to extend to this state and also uh, maybe one particle may come to this state it is actually possible so ni can change and so uh, the differential of this ni can exist but differential of gi is equal to zero and also you know that log you know that log of f of x is actually 1 by f of x the differential of log f of x is actually 1 by f of x differential of f of x so you can apply the same result here so uh, differential of this log n i plus g i is actually uh, you can write this as n i plus g i differential of log n i plus g i is 1 by let me put that here 1 by n i plus g i times the differential of n i plus g i and the differential of n i plus g i is what it is actually ni because differential of gi is zero so differential of ni plus plus log ni plus gi times differential of ni because uh, from this you get differential of ni and you can see that this term this term this term sorry this term this term is here that is this n i plus g i delta n i plus log n i plus g i d this is this is the thing this is the thing here so let me take the so let me take the differential of this n i log n i 
and this g i log g i and uh, you can see that this differential of this g i log g i is zero because there's no change uh, for the degeneracy of the states so delta g i is zero so this is this term the differential of this term is zero so differential of this term n i log n i is not zero you can see that let me do it differential of n i log n i that is n i first into differential of log n i plus log n i times the differential of the first one this n i so differential of log n i is n i 1 by n i times the differential of n i plus log n i log n i delta n i and you can see that uh, come here look here n i by n i by n i delta n i that term is here and that minus come from because we already have a minus here so that is here and minus uh, that minus propagate to inside and that gives the here minus sign log n i delta n i minus zero so that is here this is actually very simple and you can see that this n i plus d i and this n i plus d i cancel and you only get delta n i here and also this n i and this n i cancels to 1 and a minus delta n i here so this plus delta n i this plus delta n i minus delta n i cancels to 0 so the remaining thing thing is summation over i look at here summation over i log n i plus g i minus log n i and you take this delta n i from this both as a constant uh, as outside the bracket look here this delta n i comes outside the bracket is equal to is equal to this zero. in fact actually they use a small trick here uh, that is if you have x minus y is equal to 0 then you can simply write y minus x is equal to 0 because you can take a minus sign common and it can uh, take to write RHS with along 0 and minus 0 so x minus y is equal to 0 means y minus x also equal to 0 that is saying simply that is x is equal to y that's the basic reason so you can write log a minus log b is equal to 0 implies log b minus log a also is equal to 0 so from both equation you know that log a minus log b is log a by b is equal to 0 and also from this second equation what you get log b by log a is equal to 0 So remember the condition that the RHS should be equal to 0 in that case only you can write log a minus log b log log a minus log b as log b by a instead of log a by b. So the RHS should be equal to 0 in that case you can write log a minus log b as log a b by a instead of log a by b. So you can write log n i plus d i minus log n i and let me take this this n i plus d i as a and this n i as b then you can write log n i plus d i minus log n i as log n i over n i plus d i because we use the result log a minus b is equal to 0 implies log a by b by a instead of log a by b so you get uh, summation over i log n i over n i plus d i delta n i is equal to 0 we 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 have some other conditions too in in our case that is uh, the second condition is a summation over all n i is is equal to constant because 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 our particle total number of particle n is constant 
and this total number of particles n is distributed over all this over all this this total number is n is distributed over all these energy states so i can so i can i can write this n total number of particle n is equal to summation over n i it is equal to constant i just take uh, a small n small letter n instead of capital n and also from this equation you can take the differential on both sides you can see that delta n is equal to uh, you can interchange the summation and the differential i already talked about that uh, summation over i delta n i is equal to zero uh, there's one more uh, condition too that is the energy of the system is conserved means our system is non dissipative uh, non dissipative means we the energy does not lose through any other means of friction or something like that we run the air etc so our system is non dissipative so due to this energy conservation you can write the total energy the total energy uh, is equal to constant and we can simply see that total energy is n i e i summation over n i e i because n one number of particles in one state and n two number of particles in another e two state e2 energy n1 number of particles have e1 energy and n3 number of particles have e3 energy so the total uh, energy is n1 e1 plus n2 e2 plus n3 e3 so in lot of states lot of particles then you have summation over n i e i and that is equal to constant so, so you can also take the uh, differential on both sides of this equation that get uh, the on on doing that we get different delta e is equal to summation over i e i delta n i is equal to zero so we need to use this both condition uh, that is condition three and condition four that is condition three and condition four to maximize the entropy so there's actually a trick uh, of lagrange multiplies for maximizing a function with that uh, obey some conditions or maximize a function uh, under some constraints it's a it's a method of mathematics let me try to explain it a little shortly that is if you have a function f of x and x here f of x is here uh, and imagine this is the graph of f of x this green line represents the graph of f of x and if you somebody asked to you that what is the maximum value of f of x you know that it is this value this is the maximum value of f of x and you get this maximum value at the condition in which in which in which delta f of x is equal to zero no change in the f of x that uh, occurs at this maximum point but if uh, if you have a constraint or condition like a straight line this red line represents a condition then somebody asks to a question that what is the maximum value of f of x that obey this condition there's only one value uh, that obey this condition that is actually actually this value this value this value is that value so uh, so uh, the lagrange multiplies is a trick used to find um, uh, find the maximum of functions that obey some constraints so le let me apply it in a apply it here so this is that trick that is equation 2 equation 2 plus alpha times equation 3 plus beta times equation 4 alpha and beta are called lagrange multiplies so we have equation 2 here that we get through maximizing the entropy uh, and also we have the condition uh, 3 and this condition 4 so uh, this equation 2 plus alpha times this equation 3 plus beta times this equation 4 is equal to 0 is the equation that we need to solve for finding the maximum value or value of the function which is our function the entropy
and also you can simply see that this equation this equation 2 is 0 so and also this equation 3 is also 0 and also this equation 4 is also 0 this is 0 this is 0 so this is 0 so this is this equation is actually uh, is very simply speaking in very looser language uh, very loose language this is actually a big zero equation 2 a big zero plus uh, equation 3 that is actually alpha times a another big zero plus uh, beta times equation 4 equation 4 is also zero so another big zero so on adding these three zeros is actually another big another big zero that's a very simple idea so on adding those equations you get very simply if you take this delta n i outside you get uh, you get this log n i plus d i and also this alpha and this beta inside beta times e i this e i so beta times e i inside the bracket times this delta n i this delta n i and also this delta n i comes outside the bracket is equal to zero and also you can see that this delta n i s are independent uh, so they, they can they can be zero and in general so you can write this thing inside this bracket as zero so log n i over n i plus e i plus alpha plus beta times e sub i is equal to zero from this equation you can write that from this equation you can simply write you can simply write log n i over n i plus d i is equal to minus minus alpha plus beta e sub by a bracket so from this equation you can take uh, cancel this logarithm by taking exponential function on both sides so you take you take exponential because because you already know that e exponential of log of f of x is equal to f of x because because why because this logarithm has the base natural base x e and you can check that result using the fundamental ideas of logarithm and so if you take logarithm on both sides you get n i over n i plus t i is equal to e to the power minus alpha plus beta e sub by so that's equation here look at here e to the power minus alpha plus beta e i is actually 1 by this is 1 by 1 by e to the power alpha plus beta e sub i is it right because e to the power minus alpha plus beta e i is 1 by e to the power alpha plus beta e i so because uh, x to the power minus 1 is 1 by x that's the result so you can take this this thing to the right hand side then you get what look at this blue ink e to the power alpha plus beta e sub i is equal to is equal to n i plus d i over n i so that's the thing happened here 
look at this greening e to the power alpha plus beta i is equal to n i plus e i over n i if you divide this this if you divide this n i plus e i by this n i you get uh, n i by n i is 1 and g i over n i from this equation you get this so you can write from this equation that n i that is this 1 comes to right hand side as minus 1 is equal to uh, as minus 1 is equal to minus 1 is equal to uh, g i over n i so from this equation you can take this n i to the lhs and you get n i is equal to g i over e to the power alpha plus beta e i minus 1 this thing comes to the denominator so we get this equation so in your exam if you are asked to derive both einstein distribution law or both einstein distribution function then derive up to this point and also you can simply show that this beta is equal to 1 over kbt and also this alpha is equal to minus mu over kbt uh, you already uh, saw the derivation of beta in your uh, in my classes on maxwell boltzmann statistics and using that tricks you can simply show uh, simply derive this beta and alpha and this mu is called the chemical potential and actually you don't have the detailed study of chemical potential or alpha or the derivation of alpha and beta in your bsc syllabus you don't have it so if you wish to study it or if you wish to know it please let me know i will i will explain these derivations of beta and alpha and also the significance of chemical potential etc for you please write to me